We know something happened in the mountains of disputed Kashmir. No shots were fired, but soldiers clashed and died. There are claims brutal, basic weapons were used. Two nuclear powers were in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and both blamed the other. So what happened on the India-China border? And why does it matter so much? It's 45 years since the last deadly clash between India and China on this border. 45 years. So what changed? Well, the pressure was building. This is the Galwan Valley. It sits on the border, which you can see identified there as the line of actual control, the LAC. There are troops on either side of it, and the territory around the LAC is still disputed. One recent example is India's upgrading of its infrastructure to China's irritation. Now, this border has always been about managed tension. But that tension reached a breaking point. This is India's version of events. It says the Chinese sought to erect a structure in the Garwan Valley on our side of the LAC. More recently, India said these satellite images of construction in the border area are proof of China breaking the rules. But then there's China's story. It sees things quite differently. Whatever the reason, both agree that something happened. China says it was fierce and physical. One Indian officer told the BBC, they hit our boys on the head with metal battens wrapped in barbed wire. Our boys fought with bare hands. And an Indian official passed this image to the BBC, claiming these are Chinese weapons. And if you're wondering why this involved hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's because of a deal back in the 90s that banned guns or explosives near the border. So they fought in a different way. Precisely how, though, we can't know because there's no footage. So if you've seen lots of videos being shared on social media, like this one or this one, they aren't of this clash. What are real are videos like this of funerals in India. It says 20 of its soldiers died, and claims China lost men too. For its part, China has a policy of not commenting on military casualties. So precisely why this escalated on June the 15th, we still don't really know. But these are two neighboring global powers constantly jockeying for position. And at this part of the border, the past matters too. They fought a war over this patch of land back in 1962, a war in which China essentially uh, rapidly defeated India. And that has been a historical trauma for India in subsequent decades. Prime Minister Modi may not call it a historical trauma, but he's aware there's an appetite for India to assert itself. And look at these pictures from Uttar Pradesh. That's an effigy of President Xi. Whether by design or not, the Hindu nationalism that fuels Modi's political power is firing up. Some see Modi standing up to China. Some say he's not done enough. Others see ulterior motives. One Bengali newspaper says of him and his party, country and patriotism is only a political weapon for them. There's also the Chinese suggestion that for India, this is a national inferiority complex playing out. Have a look at this from the editor-in-chief of the state-backed Global Times. He says the fact is India can't beat China militarily and its weak economy isn't able to sanction China. Don't bluff and stop pushing more Indian soldiers to risk their lives, he says. But what about China's motives? Certainly after the event, it wants to be seen as fair but powerful. These pictures are from state media. We're told this is recent footage of a high-altitude military drill. And consider this. As this Indian journalist notes, the Chinese media broadly buries news of the worst clash on the India-China border for years, he argues. And it's true, the government and the media has largely not wanted to get into the detail, nor ramp up the rhetoric, which points to a difference. While neither may have really wanted this to happen, once it had done, for China, it became a moment to reference its military superiority. That is a message for India. For India, while well, it wants to be seen to stand up to the Chinese, that's, of course, a message for China, but also for Indians and for a watching world. Though, disappointingly for India, that watching world has shown little interest in getting involved. And while we may never know precisely what happened on that cold June night in the mountains, that men died is proof of how high the stakes are for India and China and how their rivalry will shape the region for years to come. 
Thanks very much for watching. If you liked that report, you can find lots more from me right here.